I said last week, we covered the Agile value principle benefit and um, why Agile is becoming very popular. And today we're going to be um, doing more of a deep diving into just one of the practices of Agile. I mentioned last week that Agile has uh, four value, 12 principles and um, many practices. And one of the most popular one is Scrum. So if somebody asks you the difference between Scrum and Agile, the Scrum is just a type of an Agile. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a type of Agile, it's a practice of Agile, it's a, one of the methodology that we use to carry out uh, Agile project management. So the popular ones are the one I'm displaying here, Scrum, Kaban, Fusion uh, Driven, uh, FDD, that's Fusion Driven Development, DSM, uh, Crystal, and uh, SP. It depends on um, the project you are working on. And uh, in uh, I think most organizations are currently using a Scrum and Kanban. Some of them, some of them combine the two together. So for one benefit, they call it Scrum Band. But in most cases, this today lecture is going to be focusing on Scrum and um, is the most popular as of today. Um, agile deliverable um, delivery um, vehicle in, uh, in the industry. So, Scrum in a hundred words, just to keep it simple. Scrum is an agile process that allows us to focus on delivering the highest business value in the shortest possible time. It allows us to rapidly and repeatedly inspect actual working software for customer engagement and the business set the priority, the team self-organized to determine the best way to deliver the highest priority value and every two weeks to a month and in this, in, in most cases now, every week, a working software is actually delivered where which customer can interact with and, um, and deliver uh, uh, a value where, where possible. So it's a, that is a scrum in there. If you look at the definition of scrum, it's actually key in into most of the agile principle of cool delivery, um, responding to customer and um, 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 working software as a, a show of progress in all those scale, all those are most of the value in Agile. So Scrum is like um, every framework and structure in, in Scrum is in line, if you trace them in line with Agile principle. It might not be with all, but some of the Agile principles, they are not outside the place, like a subset of the uh, Agile principle. So you're going to be seeing the familiar um, terminology as we proceed. So Scrum on its own, as a practice of Agile, it has its own framework method too, and um, it has a pillar and uh, its own value too, which these values too, they are in line with the global value of, uh, of Agile. So the three pillar of Scrum that make some so successful uh, inspect, adapt, and transparency. In Scrum, transparency is very key, giving visibility to significant aspect of the process to those responsible for the outcome. In, in Scrum, the artifacts are always displayed in public places. The progress report, you don't have to wait for uh, a regular monthly report before you know where you are. The burn down chart is displayed in public places where the stakeholders that are involved in the project can actually see. The impediment board, which are the uh, issue board, they are, they are feasible, you are not hiding it. The, um, the um, Scrum meeting, though, daily Scrum uh, meeting, though it's owned by the team, people can actually come in and listen to you to have the graphs of the uh, updates and also have a kind of a, a issue going on and to have a feel whether the project is actually going in the right direction. So you are doing everything in open. So transparency is key and it's one of the um, reasons why SCORM is so successful because with the transparency, the risk is being identified, minimized, mitigated, and there's, not, there, 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 there's no surprises along. So everybody is updated at every time, everybody is speaking up and then things are feasible. So that's one of the key things. The inspection of it is like timely check on the progress toward the spring go to detect undesirable variants. At every ceremony, 
the team they inspect themselves with the artifacts also they are inspected in such a way that we can spot any variance before they actually snowball into a big time risk that actually minimize disruption and enhance project delivery so adaptation to is a process as soon as possible to minimize any further deviation we inspect and we adapt we learn it's about it's in line with the learning and continuous um, um feedback in uh, in in, uh, in, in, in um, agile principle so this pillar they are the pillar that makes that, that makes scrum a kind of a, a popular practice of agile that is a, that is a actually delivering value in uh, across the across the industry now it's not only in software they've been they, it's been adopted in most of the um, industry wide where possible so also Scrum has its own value, just like Kanban has its own value and other kind of um, practices they have there, or something that is unique to them. So, but in Scrum, these are the value that the team will uphold to make sure that you are working within a, you are actually applying Scrum to deliver your, um, for, for, for delivery. The courage, focus, commitment, respect, and openness. These are the value that are expected at every point during the ceremony, every point during team interaction, every point during interfacing with stakeholder, and every point along the project life cycle in the in the, in the scrum. So these are the value that need to be that need to be um, that the team need to abide by. For example, the courage the, the scrum team member have courage to do the right thing. And work on tough problems. You must encourage them to to face challenges. They are expert. They are they are they are self-organized. They are competent team. You have to have courage to innovate. Have courage to take on challenges. And um, even when there's only a mistake, they learn from it. They don't shy away from responsibility. So they have courage to to use me method that they feel will be the best. That will deliver um, quickest value and explore in case of innovation. And most of the great uh, inventions actually uh, they were they are determined by accident, so they are encouraged to take uh, to, to take challenges. Then they focus. Everybody focus on the goal of the sprint. But every in the Scrum that's a sprint, which is a, a delivery time frame, time box fix. If it's a week, two weeks, or four weeks. The focus of the team would be on that agreed, agreed task that has been agreed for that sprint because every sprint has an objective or goal that that sprint must be achieved. So they avoid distraction, they focus on the tasks in that sprint, while other tasks that are outside the sprint are actually left in the in, in the backlog. A commitment, they are, they are, they are committed people. As it, in the scrum team, you need to commit personally into the work of the team and commit to the task that you've chosen to do so respect 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 that is very key there's no the team is um uh, is a uh, is um multi-talented and um you need to respect and believe that other people in the team they are competent and even they are they might be senior people in the team or junior people that they are even they are junior they are ready to learn they have the right attitude and they are willing to support the, the goal of the sprint. So you need to respect members in, in the team. Openness is in line with the transparency I've just explained. They are open, the, the output open to the stakeholder, the ceremonies, they are open, and the artifacts, they are open. That is how all everybody in the, in the, in the, uh, within the, that, that related to the project can actually know where and how the projects, uh, the projects are, uh, is actually progressing. So these five uh, values of Scrum, they are very important. If you are working um, as a part of the Scrum team, you need to know and demonstrate them, and look at them and uh, think about them in taking decisions and uh, as to as to work as a part of um, a Scrum team. So, why do people use Scrum? As I've said before, it's a popular. It's one of the most popular, if not the popular, um, agile um, practice. Is because 
if you can uh, deliver high productivity re reduction in cost of, uh, of delivering project, is delivering value customer, delivering high quality products. Because the process is rigorous, we always produce something that is quality and it gets product to the customer faster and uh, it improves um, personal satisfaction, improves uh, client relationship and uh, improve communication. And um, it's a rapid way of uh, reacting to changes in customer requ requirement. So it's, um, it's a popular and effective uh, a deliver a agile delivery um, method. Let me check um, if I cannot hear you. Background is noisy. Okay. okay. Um, I hope it's better now. People that can't hear me, I will endeavor to speak up a bit. Uh, um, Scrum has been used to deliver many projects, from commercial to in-house development to fixed fixed time projects, financial projects, software, satellites, mobile website is is being used to deliver a lot of um, different type of projects. So it's not it's not it's not restricted to software alone. It's a uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's becoming popular. I've seen in the construction industry now where they are trying to look at way of using a um, um, scrum to manage some part of the uh, construction project. It's where the design aspect where they are not on site yet, but they are they, they are the area where they can use collaborative tool to interface and interact with uh, with them um, with team of experts and uh, and um, and client to get the best design. For their for their project, so is a is a widespread um, practice that is used across industry on on many projects. So if my volume is better, let me know so that I will know that we are we don't have any um, impediment in this lecture. Okay. Okay, yeah, that is good. The volume is great now. So I missed some my adjustment in the computer. Yeah. So the next slide is a is a summary of what we call Scrum end to end. I will advise that this is a summary slide that summarizes what the, the the processes, the artifacts, and the um, the uh, the people that are involved in the in the Scrum. So it's a one bus stop summary of uh, of Scrum. If you want to remind yourself in the, within five minutes what Scrum is all about, this kind of uh, a page you can turn yourself to. The green aspects are uh, of the they are the Scrum activists like project backlog, sprint backlog, bond and chart, and tax tax board. The product backlog are the high level requirement that product owner will get from the customer that they've been broken down into, it's a, it's a, it's a form of a, a, a deliverable in a, uh, in project mind, like a word breakdown, breakdown structure, where the, the, the product of the project is broken down into high deliverables. That's, that is what um, product backlog is all about. And they are always further broken down, groomed, prioritized, and uh, before they actually go into the spring backlog. And the uh, product owner spend almost 60 to 70 percent of time working on the product backlog along with um, along with um, BA and uh, other people that work for them so that is a uh, that is what they do most of the most of the time so at the end of the product backlog is a big requirement but when it's broken down into smaller manageable tasks during spring meeting it, it forms a, a spring backlog. The spring backlog is what the team will work on to actually produce a working software. So 
the, the daily scrum is in the, the ceremony are in the blue with the, the um, sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint review and recro. And um, the key resources in scrum, they are product owner, scrum master and uh, <clears throat> the team member. So this is a one bus stop uh, page that summarizes what Scrum is all about. We're going to be doing a, a deep dive into all these aspects as we progress in the in the lecture. Also, I've uh, included a kind of um, a, a, a sheet sheet of summary of what the different aspects of the uh, Scrum in summary, what they done. These two slides, they are too very good for you to actually uh, read a summary. So I won't go into the because it's gonna take our time, but we're going to cover most of the things in them as we progresses. So, so taking from the slide here, so we're going to be looking at the Scrum framework uh, one by one, starting with the role that the people involved in Scrum. And before then, I will be taking the uh, a deep dive into sprint itself. And a sprint is a, a kind of, uh, if you look at that, it's a delivery life cycle. Like it's like a project in, in, the, in the real project moment. You are, you are call project life cycle, which is end from uh, end to end of the project from the start to the beginning of the project, from the initiation to close out. But in, uh, in Agile, actually in Scrum, we deliver in sprint in a small um, time frame of either one week, two weeks, or four weeks, depending on what the organization has, um, has found to be effective and the type, and the type of project. The, this time frame is the life cycle of the sprint. So all the work in Scrum, they are done within the sprint. So we have one week sprint, two week sprint, or four week sprint. So it's the life cycle in Scrum, it's not the time frame that works are actually carried out to actually produce a, um, a working software. Before the sprint, there will be sprint planning where the product backlog will be broken down into a gradual task and a goal of the sprint is determined. And those goals and the activity and the requirement that will, that will be needed to, to achieve those goals are actually broken down and form what we call the spring backlog. Immediately after the spring backlog, then the spring will start and, and continue. During the spring is when the work is done, the coding, the recovery, the, the further analysis, the testing, the demo, and the output at, at the end of the two weeks or four weeks or one week will actually be produced. So and at the end of that spring too, there's another ceremony, two other ceremony, which is uh, the review of the sprint and the retrospective meeting for the sprint. We're going to be doing deep dive into all this, all this uh, further in the lecture. So as I've said, sprint is the delivery cycle in Agile. Before sprint, there will be, um, there, there are two key activities, which is a backlog grooming and sprint um, planning. Then after the sprint, the sprint will be reviewed when it's completed and um, the, there will be a retrospective meeting where we we'll inspect and adapt to check how the sprint has, um, has how, what are the things that has gone very well or not very well during the sprint. So the sprint itself is the delivery life cycle. Just keep it like that in the mind. So, so during the sprint, the team create a finished product. And as I've said, the future that is going to the sprint, which is uh, when the work will be done, will be, coming, will be coming from the product backlog and the product owner determine what will be done in a sprint. Why, this, the, why the agile team will determine how the product will be done. The what is going to be determined by the product owner, which is one of the key participants in the, in the scrum. The reason why the product owner, product owner is the is the is the um is the person that will determine is in line with the agile principle because product owner on regular basis interface with customer and stakeholder to know what the business need all the time 
So they take information from business based on business need, business priority, and adjust what is in the backlog, which are the requirement to determine that the business wants us to go to, to the, the, the business want the dishes in the next three weeks. No matter what we are doing, the team must focus on all these features, like maybe we need additional security on our website. That is what the customer wants. So every requirement that has to be done with security will be pulled out from the backlog, and that will be the focus of the team. Then it is now left for the team to determine how. So the how aspect is done by the team, but what is actually done by the um, product owner. So as I've said, when the product owner selects and I, uh, determine the, um, the spring go on what needs to be done, the spring backlog is formed from the activity from the, um, from the um, product backlog. And the product backlog is broken down into spring backlog. The team will work on that and, um, and, and they move on. So those are the, like, a bit of background on the, on the, on the spring. So, so it's time box and uh, is um is where in most cases like in project life cycle is like execution stages if you look at um project life cycle which is like uh, initiation planning execution and monitoring then close out the sprint part is a bit of planning and execution part in the project life cycle if you want to fix it into that area if you are familiar with project management So we're going to be doing a bit of uh, talking about the roles and the people that are involved, the actions, and which is why we are here. Most people are here either to become a product owner, a QA, a developer, a BA, or a Scrum Master, which is why we are all here. So we take the people first. So these are the people that make up the Agile, um, Agile team. The inside the rectangle are the core the core team, but you interface with subject as one matter might be a shared resources and the stakeholders, these are the people that the product will be impacting or they will be using it, either positively or negatively. The business owner are the people providing resources for the, the funding and we actually shape the organization value under which the product has been um, delivered. So. These are the people in most Chrome team. People do adjust the number now, but in terms of theory, it will range between seven to nine. But some people have found that maybe 12 people might be optimum or seven might be optimum for them. It depends on the complexity and how the agile structure in the organization is actually, um, the, agile, the Scrum is structured in the organization. So, but in most cases, there'll be more developer than any other part of the team, more developer, no QA, maybe one BA, one Scrum Master, and one uh, Product Owner. The Scrum Master and the Product Owner role, they are not interchangeable. I know I've seen some cases where maybe because of cost cutting, they are looking to, they, are, they want to project product Scrum Master that can do a PO work. And in most cases, it's going to be contraving most of the value of, um, of, um, of Scrum. It's even better for a BA to stand in for a PO instead of a Scrum Master standing in for a product owner so <clears throat> so we're going to be doing a bit of deep dive into what they do and how they interact um, in scrum so the product owner de they define the feature of the products decide on the release date and the content i've said it that they determine what needs to be done they are responsible to make sure that what the team are actually working on will be delivering value for business so they are responsible for delivering the return on investment and they prioritize the feature according to the market value. I've mentioned about that. So they adjust the feature and prioritize every iteration as needed. They accept or reject the work. So at the end of the day, the, the, um, the work of product owner has taken over the, um, the strategic planning, project charter, um, scoping and other aspect work of of a um, of, uh, of, of project manager here so they're actually responsible within the scrum team for the value it's just like you, you tell somebody to go and do something 
if the guy was not doing the thing anyway, but you know why the guy is doing the doing the stuff. So the team they are responsible for how are we going to do it, but what needs to be done and why they are, it's actually the responsibility of the of the product owner, which is why the product owner work on the product backlog along with his own team all the time. In the, in, in, in some setting, you have a product owner that may have a couple of other maybe two or three BA working with the product owner to make sure that they are keeping all this key responsibility right. They are breaking the, the, the high product into deliverable. They are refining it. They are validating it. They are writing requirements on the deliverable. And they are grooming it. It's a process of grooming, fine-tuning, adding more information like acceptance criteria, acceptance criteria, making sure that all the information that is required to carry out the, the function are ready. And when they groom the um, the backlog, they, they follow what we call definition of ready to make sure that this backlog is actually ready to go into sprint as soon as the sprint is uh, when the, when the sprint time comes. So product owners spend most of the time working on the product backlog, grooming, estimating, breaking, slicing it down into smaller tasks and story. So as a product owner, in most cases they are always very good. Somebody that have a knowledge of the business and knowledge of the technology, and, and uh, is a is a somebody that is confident to interact with senior stakeholder and a good communicator. Somebody that can facilitate, that can envision, and that can um, have a um, a leadership uh, skill. They are the thing, people that fit in for a product owner. So they define the vision. The money backlog, they prioritize the need based on the need of the business because they are close to the customer. They oversee development and they, though they don't get involved in development on day to day, but when they want to, they, they can be called to clarify. They can attend most of the most of these um, ceremony like uh, like um, daily scrum. They can ask questions. They can ask clarification. They interface with scrum master all the time to make sure that development is actually going well. So they anticipate, anticipate the client need and they act as the primary liaison between the business owner and the technical team. In those days, that role, before in the old project management, the role is being done by BA, where BA liaises with the customer on behalf of the, of the team. But here now in the in Scrum Master, in the Scrum um, development, the PO is actually the, the the, in, the go between the business and the technical team. So they evaluate the progress of the of the product and um, at times they participate in a daily uh, scrum and um, most importantly they can stop the work that is going on in the sprint. It is a very tricky one where if there's an urgent business need which is in line with agile value that will respond to change instead of following plan and that is one of the four values of uh, agile so the, which is why this the product owner can actually stop what is happening in the sprint in line with that agile principle if there's an urgent business need business requirement that need to be delivered and what and the correct spring goal is not in line with that and there will be value to be lost or a delay to business value then it might be justifiable for a product owner to lay out with the team to stop the spring, start a new one that is in line with the with the um, uh, new business requirement or changes that is um that is now the 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 uh, what the business wants, so they can terminate a spring. So that is how powerful the the a product owner can be. So. In terms of the bulk of the work, is the vision, the scope management, and the release management. So they manage the stakeholder requirement. They represent the user of the system. They put themselves as the user when interacting with the with the with the development team. That is why at the end of the sprint, they must be at the sprint demo to accept or reject what has been done. So yeah, you can get what I, 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 Scrum doesn't mean everything has to work hundred percent. They are always there may be error at times where the product owner will say no we can't go we need to add more feature this is not acceptable or there has been the changes now in the 
in the better way of doing it. We can't take this, we need to improve on this future. So agile does not mean there's liver bullets or scrum does not mean there's liver bullets. Things can be rejected too. So they set the goal for the sprint. That's the vision. And um, also in terms of scope management, they own the product backlog. Know that the, book, the product backlog contain the requirement and the requirement contain the, the scope of the product that is being built in high level. So it's owned by, by a product owner. They understand and articulate to the team the requirement <clears throat> in the user story. They seek clarification. They help the team during the, um, uh, during the splitting of the story into uh, actionable tasks. They make key decisions and they set acceptance criteria for each, um, each story. And um, a story here, um, for people that are not familiar with story, is like a task. It's a simple uh, feature, a task that has got a feature that needs to be delivered. So in, in a scrum, you represent your task, the, the, um, the work that needs to be done in a, in a story, in such a way that in a simple story that is, that is feature-driven, so that is what we are seeing story here. You can, you can just within your mind that in the tasks that need to be done. So also in terms of um, in terms of releases, there are there are big products that have to be done in trenches that we have to coordinate the releases that maybe many scrum team are working together where there are a lot of dependencies between the two or three scrum team. So you need to coordinate the release in such a way that the 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 um the, the um, transition is efficient. So they establish the release, the release plan goal, maintain the scope for each release, approve the release, and communicate new functionality of the changes to stakeholders. So that is a um, bulk of what the PO will do in, um, in, um, in uh, Agile. So let me check, some people are chatting again. Okay, let me quickly address these four questions before we move to the um, the next one. Who are the one above? Who many? Okay, maybe how many meetings take place in a sprint? Okay. In a, in a, who are the one involved? Development team are the one involved in the sprint. I don't know, in the in the in the uh, sprint meeting, which is a um, sprint planning meeting. Everybody, the core Scrum team, product owner, Scrum master, and the development team, they are involved in the sprint planning. But the actual work during the sprint, the actual work, the work are carried out by the, develop, by the development team. The Scrum master facilitates, the product owner clarifies, support, but the developer, the QA, the architect, and the engineers, they actually carry out the work in the sprint. Yes, BA work in Agile team. I, 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 there's a session of um, of um, dedicated for that because I know one of the one of the area, things I want to clarify here is for everybody to know which area of the Agile they want to develop their career. So BA is an active part of um, Agile team. When you say backlog, do you mean what should I be done? No, backlog in this tense. It's not, it's not the negative backlog that we have backlog, no. Back, yeah, it, it, it kind of backlog, they are like, what break down a feature of, if you are making a product, that product is broken down into, let's say, a 10 high level requirements. Those high level requirements, they are backlog. They are, they, 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 are, they call them spring backlog. It's where, the features of the product are actually stored. They are stored there for them to now be groomed, prioritized, and get ready for, for baking. You know what I'm saying? Let's say like baking is happening during the spring. So when you are when you are when you, are, you make it oven ready, just like uh, Bonnie Johnson said, we have a oven ready deal. The backlog between the backlog, um, spring backlog. 
between the product backlog and the spring backlog is where you do the grooming and the prioritization. The grooming in this case is not the negative grooming that we know. It's the grooming is a process of refining, adding more information, breaking down those big requirements into actionable, smaller requirements that you can easily estimate without convincing that people can see and know what to be done. So in a simpler form that we can estimate that this item will be maybe uh, uh, four hours or uh, we use what we call story points here that a story point is a, a kind of way of um, determining the complexity of task in agile. The smaller story point may is simpler than the bigger one. So in most cases, is follow what we call Fibonacci rules. We're going to do a bit of story later, but that is how we, I, uh, the tasks are labeled to, 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 to determine their complexity. So the backlog doesn't mean it's bad. It's just the way we store the requirement in high level in, a, in, a, in Scrum. When we talk about requirement, how does the organization get this? Is there a document or is there? Yeah, there will be, yeah, there, that, is, that is the work of uh, the business people and the PO. We look at um, the, in the in the old in the in the project management where we call BRD, which is business um, requirement document, which is a big document that you have to produce as a BA there, which has to be signed off and handed over to that will be handed over to the PM. From that, the PM is going to determine the scope, the plan, and fire on. But in a, in a, in, a, in Scrum, that still exists, but the those requirements are now structured with more official driven requirements where what needs to be done, they are written in such a way that is driving value, is, is a product like, in such a way that they can now be broken down into uh, uh, a smaller sub uh, deliverable that can be stored in the backlog. So I think I've uh, addressed uh, most of the question. There'll be other time, there'll be uh, time for for that question and answer later. So. The next, uh, the next person, there's nobody that's not important in a, in, a, in a Scrum team, but the next one is Scrum Master. The Scrum Master owns the process, while the product owner owns the product, just to keep it simple like that. The Scrum Master is own, the, or our own, it's not the one, it doesn't have to be uh, man or woman, is the owner of the process, is most responsible to make sure that people are following the Scrum guideline Scrum values are being displayed, are being abided by. People are following the laid down rules and things are being done in the right way so that the right result can be, can be achieved. So it's the owner of the process, it's the process owner here. So one of the keys is to make sure that all the Scrum ceremonies are carried out and the right people are there the right input, the right, there's a right input for the ceremony. The ceremony, they are, they are meetings. They are right input for that meeting. Right output are gotten. Right people are invited. And right value are displayed during the meeting. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process owner. So it's remove impediment or anything that can slow or stop the work from going on in the sprint and ensure that the team fully functional and productive. It makes sure that the team understand what is expected of them in Scrum in the in the in the in the scrum processes, the coach the, the process, they train the team on agile, and also make sure that any issue are highlighted, reported, impediment are, are identified, risk are identified quickly, and also minimize the interference of external stakeholder from the team. Because don't forget that one of the key um, one of the um, key value of uh, scrum is committed is committed. At the spring meeting, the team will commit to a set of tasks in, in line with the goal. When they commit to that uh, work, they, they are committed to that work for a fixed term of a sprint, if it's a one week or two week. So they are meant to focus in line with this come value of focus. So for them to focus, somebody must be shedding them from distractions. So that's one of the core job of this Scrum Master to make sure that external interference is minimized in the team. So, as a scrum master, is a, a scrum master is a, it's not as powerful as the project manager because they don't have authority. They are like a servant leader. They are coach. They teach their team on agile, on their team development, on on 
anything that will make the team work very well. The Scrum Master facilitates all the agile ceremony, like um, um, Spring Backlog, Daily Scrum, Spring Review, Spring Retro, even Backlog Grooming. If you have a lazy, uh, I would say if you have a PO that is very, very busy, that may be a risk to your Scrum team. So the Scrum Master must work closely with the product owner to make sure that the product are groomed, the, the backlog are groomed and ready. And for any backlog uh, item, must have at least five, um, five ready require uh, 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 five sprint of ready requirement. What I mean, if I, for example, if you give uh, after one sprint uh, planning, we have a sprint backlog that the team will go and do in two weeks. After completion of that two weeks, before the completion of that two weeks, there must be another set of ready groomed story that the team can pick up in the next sprint. So one of the key work of Scrum Master is to make sure is liaising, interfacing, and making sure that this, the, the, the backlog are being groomed in readiness for sprint because there's no point wasting the developer team that you are paying, I don't know um, how much per day on, and uh, you don't have work for them to do. So just to make sure that anytime they finish one sprint, there's more than enough, at least five ready-made um, uh, sprint, uh, sprint uh, backlog are ready so that the team can continuously work and deliver for, for customer. So as a teacher, I always have to be coaching the team on agile value principle, and uh, any 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 product knowledge that worth sharing, so it's a facilitator. It's going to facilitate all the all the four or five ceremonies. So and um, as a as a coach to to the um, to the um, scrum um, team. So as a scrum as a, as a, as a um, scrum master, you must know how to multitask. So you have many acts of scrum master you must be able to handle disruption. You are referring to blow start when the sprint starts, manage the manage the scrum process. You have to be observing what is going on, looking at the risk, updating the the um the progress on the activists. You're going to be helping the team to organize. If there's any dysfunctional within the team, any issue, you have to remove it and you have to escalate where possible. You have to inspect and adapt where things are not going very well. You have to spot it. And you are the go-to person that if anybody wants to interface with the team. The scrum master is the point of contact. So the scrum master serves the team, serves the product owner. So in most cases, juggling between the two. So, and it has to be loyal to <laughs> both sides. So, so the team was there, I want to say between um, five to nine, cross functional, tester, BA, designer. These are people that know what they do to do. They are expert in their own field. So they do the requirement clarification, they do the coding, the testing, and the deployment, and um, they are self-organizing, and um, they have to work within the scrum value of respect, focus, commitment, openness, and uh, and um, maybe the other third one. So those are the values that guide them as they do their work. So I think most of us will be falling into one of the team is there as a BA or as a tester or a developer or, or in some cases now you might have a, a that at me as part of it maybe a, a Jira a Jira coordinator as part of the the Scrum team so we're going to be falling into into um one of it okay that's all about the people within the scrum framework so let's now look at the um the ceremony which are the meetings and these are the where we interface with uh, the people interface with the processes where the most of the agile value and the scrum value we have to making sure that we display them here to make sure that we get the right result for for our product
spring planning is um okay let me make it um go here spring planning is here which is the blue one is uh is the meeting that we do before the beginning of the spring and as the name implies we are planning for the sprint and during the spring planning there are two things two key deliverables that are very very important that must be achieved the spring goal which must be in line with the business requirement as, as at that time that spring goal will be set by product owner and the spring backlog which are the tasks that will be required to achieve those goals so those are the two key deliverables that must be achieved in um, in uh, during the sprint so so it's uh, it's time boss it's two uh, two hours per week for for a two week spring and um you can include as many people that can help but call people that must attend the team the, the, the scrum team must, must attend the scrum master will facilitate and the product owner will be there along with their team as i've said some product owner might have about three or four ba working for one product owner all of them will be there to clarify requirements because the product owner is telling them that guys this is what you are doing for the next two weeks it is where it is now left for the team to clarify okay how are we going to do it what do we need do we have enough ad uh, information more clarification how long so it is when where the um the more refining of the of the requirement will be done into um our um, a spring backlog with a, uh, with a list of stories a task that will be done to achieve that goal for that sprint so as i've said there are two things the spring backlog and the spring goal they are the output of our spring planning meeting everybody must attend the stakeholders can attend any relevant stakeholder that can help with the spring goal can also attend but the product owner the scrum master and the team that is where that they attend so they decide how to achieve the spring goal the, the spring backlog is tax from the product backlog user story and they estimate how long that is going to take and if there's any gap in the time of information that is where they will actually dictate and seek clarification so at the end of the day this is where you have like an open ready open ready um task to go so you don't blow your whistle that starts until you have a very very um um revised story in your spring and the team must commit to that this is what they can do and this is what they believe they, they know what to do and they believe that all the information they, they that is required to to carry out the sprint are actually available at the before the item is actually put in the sprint planning in the sprint backlog so scrum master role during the sprint planning mark the user story as committed for the sprint if the team usually agree to take the story make sure that the story Committed half owner assigned half a proper task created. Ensure all tasks are assigned to team and all the tasks should have estimated hours. Update and validate capacity, team member allocation, overloading and avoid over allocation. Soft to pick more story when the capacity is full or almost full. This is where you as you plan for the meeting, you plan for the sprint, and uh, you check your resources to make sure that do we have adequate resources to actually carry out this sprint so that is a uh, most of the key role that scrum master is going to be looking at and be focusing on during the meeting in addition to facilitation then the product owner will create and provide the spring goal and later negotiate with the development team to get it finalized that guys this is what i want you to do are you capable if the spring goal for example that's why the whole negotiation if the if, if let's say if a lot of team members on holiday during that time, and most of the people that can carry out the spring goal are not there. That may be the negotiation might have to, to call me. So in some cases, there there is a kind of collaboration instead of contract in line in line of um, agile principle here. This, this is that kind of behavior you negotiate to get the best a win-win for for the team. 
So you clarify, it's going to clarify the doubt if any story, if there's any, um, any further uh, requirement, clarification, or realization that I require. And make sure they navigate the story in parity one by one to check if the team can commit, keep the spring goal in mind. So the actually PO very key um, participant in the in the spring meeting. Then the team. The team they negotiate and finalize the spring go with the product owner. They make sure they understand the story and they groom it. If not groom here, estimate the story point. If not estimated, it depends on the level of uh, agile maturity of uh, every organization. There are some story that will have been maybe estimated, groom and um, refined, ready to go in uh, by product owner before the end of the spring. But there will be some area where we have to do more clarification, do more refine and estimate of the of the story that, that will be but the final decision will actually be either review or taking during the spring um, planning meeting so they update and validate available resource uh, that is available and they map out the dependencies and risk based on the way they will work so these guys they are a team of experts that they know what they're doing so you kind of a respect when they raise any concern in terms of the in line with the agile um, principle so you listen to them, you clarify, because actually they will do the work. So they must be very comfortable that it's work they can do before you actually, they actually commit themselves to, to the spring. So that is a, one of the key story. So it's like a, a mini planning meeting aspect of Scrum. So that is a, the, Scrum, uh, the Scrum planning. Sorry, the spring planning meeting. So. Is a, one of the main plan is one of the planning aspects of uh, um, where part of um, is part of the scrum process where the the planning the stage planning actually take place. Then another ceremony is a daily stand up. It's one of the most popular uh, ceremony that in the scrum is um. Is that called Scrum Meeting Daily Stand Up? People call it many names, but it is time box. It's 15 minutes. It happens every day. So this is where after the team has committed themselves that, okay, they've committed themselves to the spring go, and they've agreed that for this spring go to be done, there will be maybe 10 tasks that need to be carried out. So the, the, that is frozen, and, uh, and, and, and they move to the spring on regularly, they now start, let me go back to this again. They start, um, where is that? End to end map. Yeah, this is where, this is the spring backlog green here. Now the spring is ready. When it's ready, they move to the sprint immediately. And uh, you see the, at the beginning, this, um, is, um, the bottom of work, we see the, the circle is very big. Gradually on a Monday, let's say a two week spring, they start with the big circle and move gradually for the rest of the two weeks until they keep on doing the work gradually along the two week spring. So every day they do what we call the daily checkup and the updates of the, of the daily progress is actually updated in the bone chart um, here and the task board. So we're going to talk about that in the, in the part of the lecture. But from the spring backlog, you start the daily scrum and that happened every day. And uh, it's one of the most important ceremony in, um, in uh, Agile. So what do we do there? It's a very brief 15 minute meeting and everybody is owned by the scrum team. It's not owned by scrum master. Scrum master can facilitate it. Any member of the team can actually facilitate it. So it's team meeting. It's what it's like. What did I do yesterday? The three questions are, are they are asked of everybody that what did I do yesterday? What am I doing today? And what are my impediments? Impediments are blockers, issues that I have that may allow me not to do my work properly. So everybody have to speak and you speak loud. And you keep it simple to those three agenda. Any for that, any for that 
discussion that arrived during the spring meeting is noted and that can be discussed at the end of the at the end of the meeting so that the 15 minutes is effective to focus on agree the daily strategy get the updates let everybody know where everybody are uh, where we are on the on the on the on the delivery and it's one of the ceremony that is that is um, actually managing the risk of the of the deliverables because it's actually making sure that it's in line with the transparency aspect the transparency pillar of um, of um, of scrum because here you're going to say this is what i'm working on this is what i've done this is what i would do this problem i'm having so nobody is bottling anything up nobody is hiding anything that's a problem that can be spotted quickly and uh, and, uh, and and resolved. So it's one of the way you are reducing risk to delivery in Scrum. So it's owned by the developer, by the development team, not by the Scrum master. Is uh, this is not a status meeting? You don't go into detail. Just say what you've done to yesterday, not day before yesterday. If you are doing it on Wednesday, just focus on what you did on on Tuesday, not Monday. So that is uh that is um how simple it is this meeting should not exist 15 minutes to make sure that it's uh, focused the meeting should be conducted every day usually beginning of the day so that we can all have the daily strategy and know where we're going possible same place same place another one won't be valid now that everybody is working from home but even if we are working from home like i still do my daily scrum meeting every morning that you die into the call and you do it and i'm very sure too, when you get to the um the practical aspect of the of the program you're going to be getting involved in the project where you're going to be required to do uh, regular daily uh, scrum activities so the development team attend must must attend the scrum master and put on are optional so though being facilitated by scrum scrum master is actually a development team meeting so they own it, they must attend the why? Because they are the they are the person actually carrying out the work during the sprint. So they are the person that can tell, tell the team or the stakeholder um, what they've done, what they are doing, the problem they are having. So we are standing up to make sure that people don't, they don't become comfortable and um, and take it from uh, one minute to five minutes because they are very comfortable to talk. So it just that's that is the that is why it's called stand up. I'm very sure we are not standing up from when they're working from home anyway. But the principle is still there that you follow the 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 guidelines. So these are the kind of the common rules, and um, we're not gonna be going into that in detail because of time, but we can pick a bit of it. You state your name, you speak loud, and uh, no long discussion. After the scrum call, any issue raised can be dealt with. You keep your note, you discuss it after the scrum uh, call, no cell phone, no dysfunctional behavior, no long discussion, and you do it at the same place. If you are working from home, you log into your bridge, and um, you'll be free to speak yourself, because if you, are, if you are not doing very well, you're having an issue, that is why that question impediment is there. Don't bottle things up, don't hide any issue you are having. You raise it so that people can know and reduce the risk. So. That is a that is a you are expected to be transparent. It's part of the transparency of a, um, a value of, of Scrum. So this is one, this is one of the why Scrum is actually working. So because in the open game management, you can in a um, waterfall, the the senior stakeholder might not know the update on the after after the next status meeting, but here every day the stakeholder can know what is going on and shout immediately that oh. When we're, we're in trouble, this project is not going on very well, or we're, we're in good shape. So that is uh, one of the key a key area where the transparency value is being um, is being displayed. So okay, yeah, it's mandatory for the team. The scrum master, the scrum master should attend where possible, but the product will not go at, go attend. If this guy, if the team need um, clarification, or if the product will not want to know the um the update on what is going on within the spring they can pump in let's say if the spring is two weeks you may see your po coming like uh, maybe twice in a week it depends on how busy they have to come and listen and see if at, especially at the beginning of the team to, to support the team to to actually gauge the um 
performance uh, barometer of the team at the beginning. Uh, the more they become conf confident about the team, the more they allow you to go. So these are the responsibility of everybody within the daily scrum. So I won't go into detail too because the slide always is available for us to, to look at, be conscious of time. So the scrum master will check the bond down chart, assign tasks if required, and um, the fo making sure that the team is actually focusing on the entire goal. The, um, the, the team, they will state what they've done yesterday, as I've said, a bit of tax update and um, update the 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 the, bon the, um, the tax board with the remaining hours of what needs to be done and um, and all those things. So it's the scrum master that will make sure that the team or they know how to do the scrum. They have the right venue. They have the right approach and making sure that all the impediments have ownership. They are locked. The bond the bond. Um, the, the, the bond down chart is actually updated based on daily progress. So that is um that's a key detail of what the everybody will do during the daily scrum. So and uh, the daily scrum purpose mostly is transparency, proactive decision I've said, set the daily strategy, identify a roadblocker, and um, in terms of transparency, you can get progress. You can understand dependencies of oh dependencies are the kind of uh, a work how one tax is actually depending on another. So if you have five tax for people that don't know, if you have five tax one to five, if tax two need to be completed before I can start tax four in your daily meeting, you know that if Mr. A is actually working on tax two, you will know when it's going to be completed. So you know when you can schedule your own tax four. So that's how you get the dependency information. Then the risk management is to make sure that things are not going wrong by speak out if you're having any issue. So it's a way of team collaboration, face-to-face, -face, team building too. When you see yourself every day, you become very comfort comfortable and, and, um, and that promotes team spirit. So those are the strategy. And uh, once again, at the end of the day, the, the, the common understanding of the team progress is achieved. At the end of the at the end of the team, when you get to your desk, you know that oh, this is where we are. This is what we need to do today. The execution strategy for the day is very clear. The um, the spring backlog is updated with what that has been completed and what that is pending, and uh, all the other boards too. They are they are they are updated. The spring um, at the end of the the um, this committee. Other stuff I've included here are the rules. Is um, state your name, speak loud. I think I've touched most of these things. So the bond that bond down shot are uh, updated. You don't. It's not where you're going to bring your phone to switch on your phone. It's 15 minutes. So it's after scrum that you discuss about the notes that you've kept. So in terms of uh, why standing up for this meeting, I know we're not <laughs> in a in a co-located team where everybody is um, working in the same place and face to face it's normally be done in a corner in the effort to stand up to make sure that people are focused you can stick to the agenda so easy access to the scrum board because when you are talking you can you can refer to scrum board for your updates and when there's an um, any update required you can actually update so you gather around your your tax board to do it so it's avoiding long discussion anyway. When people are standing, they just want to go. And face-to-face -face is better, which is the face to face communication is one of the best way of communicating. And uh, just to make sure that people are not prolonging it. When we are sitting down, we feel too comfortable and we're going to be extending it. So, so that is um, daily scrum. I know a couple of uh, people ask questions. Let me see. So where did you stop? When you say backlog, do you mean that should be no no? Backlog is what I recommend. Thank you. Does it mean that the main product is divided into five sprints? No, you can have as many as it depends on the the complexity of the work you are doing. If you are doing a massive project, you can have up to 
two other sprints. So what I'm saying, every sprint we have been pre-agreed. If it's two weekly sprint, if it's one weekly sprint, or if it's four weekly, depending on the delivery strategy and, uh, and the complexity of the project. The number of sprints for every development, depending on the, 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 um, how big the project is, that is, that is for a bigger project, you have more, more sprint than a smaller project. So let's keep it simple like that. Does the, okay, does the, does the depth, okay, depth team including Developer coding and tester. Yes, we call them dev team. That is a developer and, a, and tester. In most cases now, most of the tester now can write a bit of code and um, and a developer can do a bit of testing. So where I just want to get to is to make sure that everybody can do a bit, a bit, a bit of what, um, what you have a multi, uh, multi skills in such a way that we can actually uh, do a bit of all those things so that when there's no one, when more resources not available, people can step in and still be keeping the the spring going. What happens when a new member of staff joining in the middle? In most cases, it's not advisable to bring in new person to join the spring in the middle, except if the person is coming as an expert to do clarification, maybe on let's say if that person is a, is a, a, a database expert and the database issue, you can bring that guy in for clarification one of the meetings. And uh, the 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 team, one of the team that you're going to be achieving the spring planning meetings to confirm availability of resources before you even commit to the work. So you have to make sure that people are available throughout the spring before you commit to the spring. So people in most cases should not be joining at the at the um, middle of the spring. Yeah. Okay. Good. The next meeting, the next uh, ceremony is a spring demo. This is very simple. Spring demo is when you show me and tell me when is at the, it happens at the end of the spring. This is where you show what you've been doing for the past two weeks or for the past one week or for the past four weeks to who? To the product owner. Because it's the product owner that you are working for. It's the product owner that set the sprint goals. So at the end of the day, the product owner is going to wait to you, wait for you at the end of here, at the end of the at the end of the spring to see guys how far what have you done in the past two weeks you've been working it's going to stay at this edge for you to be waiting and be checking your work and to make sure that oh is it in line with the requirement that we we is it in line does it have is the is it in line with the agreed requirements and um is it usable is it what customer wants is it, and at that page at that stage the po can actually accept or reject what has been done so in a in a sprint demo is a must the owner here that should be there is a uh, the stakeholder we here so the scrum team the scrum master has to be there they invite the other stakeholder the scrum master the product owner and the developer team the most present the scrum master will facilitate and they will, they will demonstrate to the stakeholders with the product owner be representing them here. So in some cases, it might be, if it's technical, the product owner might be able to be explaining it to them. So some stakeholder can come, but it might be that, it might be in some cases that if it's, if it's not a major, major shipment, it might be the product owner that you are actually demo, doing the demo for. So, so that is, um, those are the core, what happens. So, it's actually done at the end of um, of the sprint. It's where you show what you've been doing. So this is where we call we call it like a product review meeting. Yeah. So so is a uh, for one week is one hour. For one week sprint, for two weeks is two hours. These are not pre uh, these are not prescriptive. It depends on your organization anyway. So just to know that okay, you have two weeks. Maybe our two, our sprint is two weeks. Maybe our sprint should be. Review should be like two hours. A time might be shorter than that, depending on them. So all those academics, it depends on the reality on ground. So, but for interview purposes, yeah, we can um, stay that. So the next meeting is a retrospective. So this is a process review meeting. Let me keep it simple. The other one, the sprint demo, is a product review. Why the sprint uh, response is a process review? This is where we review 
all our behavior from the spring planning to the end how have you behaved have, have you done everything properly what what are the things that have gone very very well what are the things we missed out what are the things that have gone badly where are our values what where have we where have we fall short of our agile values <laughs> just like um the law where have you broken the law what have we done very well here why are we, why do we get this fantastic result so that is the essence of that here you take the it's, it's in line with the inspect and adapt and it's in line with the um one of the 12 principles of agile where you 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 check yourself for continuous feedback for continual development so it's uh it's one of those um one of those important meetings where you check yourself so so based on what has worked where and what should improve on so your agenda can be okay the good stuff or what has gone very well what did we not do very well any suggestion for improvement then there will be an action this action will actually go back into the product backlog as part of tasks that will need to be done at appropriate sprints depending on the sprint goal so so once again you say where where what should we start doing more what should we stop doing what should we continue to do start doing that things that we miss that we've not been doing and that is um those things so who should attend here this meeting is actually for developer scrum master and, uh, and product owner in some cases um stakeholder can be in this year it's advisable to avoid a lot of um a lot of um customer coming to all this thing because of um, you are you are now dealing with yourself they are not part of um they're not part of the team they're not part of the sprint you know what I'm saying? so it's you are it's a self-assessment so it has to be limited to people that um where possible the people that need to improve so the most are the people in the green circle so yeah there's some question they will, I will gather i will through the question later so the next is um the artifacts the artifact they are the product the document that we interact with in them um, in them um, in them um, in scrum they are outputs like bundan chart spring backlog uh tax board uh product backlog all those um interfaces that we use in our in our meeting in our in our um the input that we use in our ceremony and the output that we produce let's just keep it simple like that they are the input that we use in most of the scrum ceremonies and the output that we produce to radiate information to stakeholders so they are the active so we're going to be checking them one by one and do a bit of um explanation on them then i think i've talked about product backlog very well so uh, product backlogs they are the requirement requirements are what need to be done for you to carry out the the project a list of all desired work on the project ideally explained such that each item has value to the customer or customer of uh, to the user or customer of the project prioritized by the product owner observe that and reprioritize again at each sprint based on business value so the active the activers are the item in green the product backlog spring backlog the bundan chart and the tax bar so when you do your when you get to a practical part you're going to be creating gi where you have your own tax bar where you're going to store it's like when you do the tax bar when you start your sprint the spring backlog might be 10 items the 10 items will jump from here and will move to to do from to do everybody's going to be moving the one they are working on on daily basis into the progress and where they are completed they move to done it's a simple task um, linear movement to the right the bond dance chart is going to be showing going to touch it going to be showing the progress as you progress along the spring so so the this is an example of um um a shopping website uh product backlog not to be the uh, a shopping website you have key area like database creation login page category page process payment 
contact page banner area and these are the key they are the way you like the database as an operation engineer i want to be able to store all customer information so that i can serve the customer you know the 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 story has to be written in such a way that the value if you, you are not going to be looking for, looking for the value why you are doing that job must be very clear every story must be written in such a way that is value driven so whether big story or, or or smaller story the big story are normally called epics which are bigger story that can be broken down into smaller stories so they are written in a kind of a value driven um, way so like if you want to do we are building this website now these are the key high level items that need to be done so the product owner will be working and the and the and his team will be working on this regularly to break this thing down gradually gradually into small story like database creation now is like 40 points and it's going to take about 240 hours that is about how many days is that 24 hours. that is divided by eight that's about 30 days in a sprint of two weeks which is um yeah that's about two sprints so that's you can see that that's one this just creating database alone can can be the work that will be for one sprint because when they are broken down because of the hour now there'll be other steps they're going to be broken down into different tasks that will now form the 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 sprint backlog for that story if for example in the in the spring now the product now can come that in this spring our our goal is to create the database then which means that spring is going to be taking database creation um requirements and, and it's going to be broken down into all the tasks that is that will be required to create that database and that will form the spring backlog that the team will actually work on in that two weeks of how we sprint. So the next one after the product backlog is the sprint backlog. It's a subset of product backlog that the team target to deliver during the sprint in order to accomplish the goal. I think we said that many times now. We should know if they wake anybody up now, we should know the difference between the sprint backlog and the and the product backlog. The spring backlog consists of product items that the team agree with the product owner to include during the spring. Is um do a bit of deep dive again. Let's say this is your product owner, which are your eye story like like story one. Uh, just like user story one can be, for example, database creation number two might be login, just like that. Those are the backlog. Then for a sprint, for a sprint one, it might be just one, two, three items that will be broken down that will be done in sprint one. And sprint two might be user story four, which might be very heavy. Can be user story four can be an example like category page, which is a a big ticket item, which is a hundred point and going to require four hundred hours. So that will be that may be what we're going to be breaking down in that sprint to maybe further stacks for us to carry out. So that is how that thing works. So another thing to, to drive the point home, what is very key is the team decide the decide that completing the three stories actually during the sprint. Yeah, that is um, in the spring now where we have a lot of backlog items. Your backlog, the backlog item does not finish. It's always continuous because they keep on adding more on that product. It's not that it won't finish, really. Sorry, it's always full groomed, and will be. Um, it has to be arranged. The one that needs to be done, I always prioritize high at, at the top. The lower one might not be in detail, but the, the the story that are up should be more detailed, where groomed, estimated, sliced, and um, than the one down. So the team will just come and pick the top and move on with it. So that is um. So in managing the spring, individuals sign up for work of their own, choosing. So work is never assigned. So developer team, they pick the work they are capable to do. So they estimate the work. Any team member can add, delete, or change the spring backlog because a spring backlog, the team member can actually 
is the, the, the team member who owns the backlog. Nobody from outside can change it. So they can they might they might want to split a story into three so that or even the task so that they can it can easily be the risk and the dependency can easily be identified so that they can actually have clarity of how that um that the task will be carried will carried out. If the work is not is unclear, so the the bigger one is broken down and the, the estimates are updated. So for example now, as I've said, creating database here is from a product backlog. If you take it and we, we now take it into a spring backlog to create a database, you have to design customer data table, design payment data table, create customer data table, create payment data table. This 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 are the spring backlog will contain most likely how the team will now do that work it must be very clear. When okay, for somebody to create a customer table, that will cost me six hours to do. Then you're gonna have you have you have now be having clarity of the time in the how many of these can we do in a sprint? Maybe at the end of the day, we can only do four of this in a sprint based on the resources and the size of the team. Then we can move to the next sprint to continue. So so that is a that is the practical practical um way how it is done in the in the real life scenario. So after the database uh, backlog has been done, the the um, product owner can come that you know the number one number two is login. The product owner can come that no, we are not doing login. No, this is what we are focusing on now. We need to do category page based on what information based on the meeting I had with business last week. Or based on this, we need to do payment processing first. So, which means number four will move to number two. So that is what we call prioritization. Then that means payment process will now be, be begin to be groomed, split, broken down, um, populating the requirement. There are certain criteria. A lot of the BAs guys will take it and elicitate. They, they break down the requirement and do the wire framing, do the designing, and all those stuff. So that it's going to be getting ready for the for the next sprint. So that is um how is how that is um that Activas there. So as I've said, Activa Scrum Activas are the input and outputs. The input we interact with during the ceremony and the output we produce. So the burn down shot is a a kind of a shot. It's like a velocity. A, a negative gradient chart that is actually showing the way we are progressing in a sprint. So the bundle is a simple way to represent progress against baseline using a single chart. It has a stop and a hand point. It has a, a baseline and, uh, and progress um, showing together on, uh, on the chart. For example, if we agree that in this sprint, the total story of breaking down Logging a page is uh, is thirty, which means for two weeks of ten days, at day one we have thirty story points, at day two is reducing to twenty five, which means the guys are doing five per day. On the ideally, if you draw your graph with a nice scope, it's going to be going gradually. That on day zero there should be zero, so that's why it's burning down. It's not like you are smoking a cigarette that is doing smoke down from the long gradually until the end. So you are burning down the work. You are, you are doing the work from high to low. That's, that's where the name actually comes from. So this actually this must be feasible to the stakeholders. They will know if you are doing very well and must be updated daily. So if you go to the next one, if your burn if your burn down chart is looking like this at the beginning, the red one is the ID, which is baseline. If your actual is on the right hand side, it's showing that. It's smart it's showing that you are running late because if you look at the 70 here in day one in day three in the id one you should be having 40 story left but if you extrapolate up to the blue you have like 55 it shows that you are running late so when you're when you're it's part of the transparency and uh, openness in scrum when your daily, uh, when your bond down chart that is uh, very feasible to everybody is given these shapes, you can be showing that guys who are not doing very well. People will know, the PO will know, the commerce will know that how do we bring this close to the orange? So 
then if your graph is like this, might be showing that guys are moving really, really fast. It's on the other side that if like at uh, day three, normally you are meant to have like, um, if you extrapolate like this, like 45, but you're having like uh, 35 uh, study left. It means that you are doing fantastic here. So might be seen that maybe something is happening within the team that is there. These are what you have to bring to your rest, uh, during your process review meeting that oh how come how come this uh, this this uh, we are so very fast in our day two and day three and day four what happened is it because of the coffee that they gave to us um the free coffee given to us or is it because the the impediment were no more there now or most of the blockers has been removed or well because the scrum master that is always um it's not around today were in charge or you have to find out just be on the lighter mode so you have to find out why and document so because of the how the thing look, you can easily know whether it's not until you are writing an EPS2 project report to a senior management that will know whether you're on track or not. You can see straight away when you're burned down. So this is an example of a, of a, a burn down going bad. And uh, the team have to, <laughs> they have to reflect and adapt and bring it back into, into normal. So the graph can go in many ways. Depends. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, the ideal one is uh, is the the straight line. It will never be ideal. So there will be time we're going to be running maybe early towards the uh, the early of the of the of the spring. You're having a lot of issue, but when the pitman when they are removed, you are now moving very fast at a at a very high speed and you're able to meet up. So there's no ideal uh, way of. Um, you can see this one is an example of when you are doing very well and you got carried away and maybe you stop attending this scrum meeting <laughs> and before you know you are going badly again so you have to this are the part why when you look at your graph how come here what happened to us here can anybody remind us what happened with this day day five these are the things you have to document in your retrospective meeting yeah so i think with the, those are the um artifacts that we've um, actually talked about so far so we are yeah i think we are still good with time so i've got four shots here let me if you have questions you can throw it now a bit so that we can, i can answer some questions together where did i stop okay we stop what happened okay since it's not mandatory for scrum master to attend the daily scrum who facilitate the daily scrum any member of the team can facilitate the daily scrum it's not mandatory but it's expected the, the the what happened at the beginning is like um it's like the way we do if you if you have somebody working for you if you train the person to be competent you can actually go to you can go on holiday you can you can walk from anywhere and trust somebody that they will do it before the scrum master will step away or step aside scrum master will have observed the team train them very well make sure that they've invited the agile value and their performance is actually doing fantastic you can't be a scrum master can't be running out when the graph is showing like this <laughs> when your bone shot is like this scrum master has to be there you know what i'm saying but when your bone down consistently is showing like this then scrum master can go and have a meeting with their PO. I know that my team are doing very well. They know what they are doing. So it depends on um, on um, on um, where you are, and uh, the scrum master can come in and step in and, and step out. So, but in most cases, the scrum master will normally be around. So, okay, where am I going to get the text again? Okay. So, do we have anything like? business requirement spec as part of artifact no the business requirement specification will be in the product backlog so it's part of the product backlog what happened when the work can be completed on time as expected and there will be re-evaluation of why you've not met your sprint goal uh, you are you see are you have you committed to too much or do we have any issue that delay us those are the issue that you're going to address yourself as part of uh, reflect, inspect, and adapt in um, in the in the process review meeting, which is a, a um, spring rep, rep pro. So you you that way. if one person is off sick, yeah, we can. This kind of coronavirus is a risk that need to be logged that people can be off sick, which is why agile promotes 
all members of the team to be multi-skilled in such a way that if you are tester can be around, the developer can do a bit of tester and um, can juggle them. Please show you again the slide 62. Slide 62 is a, is a team getting carried away, not doing very well, but after maybe somebody stepped in or impediment removed and they were able to get back to to normal. Yeah, so that is it. So oh, we have time. Yeah, um, I want to do a clarification about the role of business analysts in an agile environment. I know a lot of people is one of the popular role and it's one of the luckiest role in project management that has actually survived. Because in in a scrum, the role of project manager now is um is um it's not well defined. You know what I'm saying? So the the PO has taken a bit of the project manager role, while the scrum master has taken a bit of project manager role. So the scrum, scrum master is doing the day to day risk management, status updates, team management, while the area of uh, planning, requirement, scope management. And uh, and um, and um, handing over, like close out on release, has been taken over by PO. So, so but I uh, business business has somehow survived. So, it's one of the role that of surviving Ajan is a uh, is a who is a business analyst according to IBA. The business analysts who understand business problems and opportunities in the context of requirements and recommend solution that enable the organization to achieve the goal. So because of the backlog um, item that will require prioritization and grooming all the time, you see a lot of BA getting involved, working with product owner to help them to actually slice, it's all this story slicing slice groom validate elicitate and do all those things what does that be on day to day the elicit the elicit and analyze the requirement from customer perspective they develop a communicable activist to facilitate the development of solution a wire a wire framing with respect to requirement and they validate the requirements so these are very very valid um, role that still need to be that still need to happen in a, in a in the scrum, which is why you have a lot of be uh, 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 within the scrum team. But it depends on the way agile, agile uh, team is set up an individual organization. I will give you a different scenario now where in some cases you might have a BA as part of the develop, uh, development team where they help to clarify, clarify any state um, requirement during the sprint. But in this case, it's not going to be a big requirement like um, BRD that you normally do. It's a bit of clarification of story, making sure that the story have acceptance criteria, it has the right, uh, um, right, um, all the technical gap, uh, de uh, technical depth are identified, and then they are the they make the definition of um, ready for the developer to work on. So you might be in a relation where you have the BA as part of the team and the PO on its own and the scrum master on our own too. So uh, there may be some organization where the BA played the role of a product owner because the BA has been is, is, a, is a, a key where you have to liaise with the business, people, with the customer, be a customer friend and be a go-to between the customer and uh, and, the, and, um, and the technical team in the, in the waterfall or mode so some ba seen you can actually perform a, a po role but you have to you have to be well trained in the PO role, but a, P, a ba can easily uh, work as a po so in some cases in a big massive project you have a po that may have about five ba working for that po to make sure they are grooming continuously grooming continuously doing vision to vision to story slicing the the product into backlog, taking the um, big story, splitting it, make sure, making sure that's what we call definition of uh, of ready, make sure that the story are ready for sprints and um, and so forth. So 
so that's why so ba can be on both sides so why business analysis in IDI? because developer cannot elicit requirements it's not their work stakeholder cannot model and document their own um, problem or solution and so you still need somebody that have analysis expert to work in between these two people so that's why b has actually survived as a role in, uh, in scrum so So what does the BA do in a IGI? Scope the system, translate business need, translate technical issue, model and document, act as a communication broker, text and validate, and represent the stakeholder in some, uh, in some cases. So um, I think that won't go into detail because of time here, but this kind of um, um, a common BA pattern where there's a business community, there's a PO, there's a development team. In this case, the PO is acting between the business community and the development, which is an ID, ID situation. There, must, there may be a situation where within development team, it's only the BA that's working, that's interfacing with the PO, and which may, within that team, if they have any requirement issue, the BA, Will be the person they come why the BA go to the PO to clarify. So that may be another arrangement. So it depends on what is applicable. And um, when one of the questions you can ask if you are going for any BA role is in this corner, that how is your how is your BA where does your BA sit within your team? Is it sitting within the team or working with the PO? So that may be a good question to ask when you have an interview here. Yeah. Also, there may be some area where, as I've said, the BA will act as a PO and then. Um, they will maybe if there's no PO there, it will be as a PO. So and um, in most cases we see some BO working under the PO to help making sure that development team are getting our oven ready spring backlog for them to work and run away with during the spring. So so that is it. Um so see how the time there's one question to address uh, let me see send your question so we can address please show slide okay i'm gonna say thank you so the next one we're going to do is the the user story so as i've said story story is not like uh, it's not like story story or storytelling story here let it as simple as the task it's the task that needs to be done. So there's a way story is written in, uh, in Agile in such a way that it has to bring the value out so that if somebody is working on it, they will know that this is the value that the customer will benefit. And that is the value, is the value that, that will be determining the resources that need to be com uh, um, committed, that will determine the prioritization. So it has to be written in a value-driven way. User story definition. A user story is simply a description of change in system behavior from the perspective of the user. It describes something a user wants to do with the system or want the system to do for them that is not currently there today. User story sits in the solution space rather than the problem space. So it has to state category the solution. The user story are great for translating customer empathy diagram into a series of changes in the software while maintaining the user perspective throughout. So there's a way you shape, <clears throat> you write a story, user story is, um, it's normally written from um, a role and action perspective, like as, as somebody, I want to do, I want this action or this future so that I'll be able to do this. For example, as a bank customer, I want to be able to, be, to, be able to log into my bank account so that I can view my balance. That's an example. That is why most of what I will use online banking is for well as a customer, I want to be able to log in into my bank account so I can view my direct debit. As a customer, I want to be able to log into my bank account so I can make, I can, I can do online transfer. So most of the future that will benefit in our, um, in our um, day to day online banking, those are the way they are written future driven so that they can actually can actually look at the value that the customer will benefit it's not about building a gigantic system at the end of the day in, in those days i've seen where 
the, the, the build the system, they would now be looking for for people to use it by training the user to use the system. So that is how IT people have been, have been delivered in those days that the IT people would just build a fantastic system based on their own experiments and academics and be looking now for to train the business people how to use it. So gone are those days now. Here now, anything that needs to be built must be must be from the user's perspective. So if, if you don't want it, don't build it. So it's part of the value, I get value of uh, the act of doing minimum. So that is one of the why Aja is driving value and, and uh, actually um, saving cost. So um, for example, as a library, as a library patron, I want to search for a book by its exact title so that I find the book I want without noise in the search. This is a kind of a, a user story now for a library database. That we get. So why this template? The template is good in that it gets answer the three questions that you, in the user. Who is it for? What do they want to do? And why do they want it? So most of the story must answer this. And who is it for? Why? Then when you are doing your testing, so you must be able to text that, okay, this is for this, this is why. And you can write your testing script um, um, for the tester guys. And, uh, and write a requirement to actually meet the, the the story. So the acceptance criteria for this story, acceptance criteria is um, uh, um, like a condition precedent. Before you can say a story has been done, a work has been completed, like a tick box, a checklist of what you will check that you know, yes, I am, I'm happy that this work has been done. So the acceptance criteria must answer all this as part of um, as, as part of the. Um, part of saying that the story is done. So again, um, story epic and story points, another word I've used interchangeably. Story, I would say story uh, collection of fiction that the team can commit to, to finish. What epic is like story times two times three times four times five. Epic is bigger story that a bigger feature that can be broken down in two, maybe too big to be to be done on the go. It have to be broken down into several stories for risk management, for estimation purposes, and for clarity. So why the story point, as I've said before, is a way of actually showing the complexity of a story. It follows a Fibonacci rule, which is a one, Fibonacci rule is a one plus one equals to two, two plus one equals to three, three plus two equals to five, five plus three equals to eight, eight like that, it's about one, two, three, five, eight, uh, eight 13, like that. So it's, it's a kind of a natural pattern that um, has been, um, that, that people used to determine the, um, a kind of, a, um, a pattern so so a story one when it's one when the story has been one that means simple simpler than two and th and from one thirty five in most cases in a sprint when story is getting to eight it's always advisable to break it down into maybe another three and five so to make sure that all the dependencies can be can be can be seen and um, and analyzed and uh, we're not bottling any risk into any big task so that is um yeah, so we're on time. So we're, that is an um, introduction to Scrum Master completed. So if you have questions now, let's answer. Explain Agile project management in the Scrum environment and who is free. I, I, all the two, this question I've answered it with two days now. <laughs> I said you want me to start the lecture again. <laughs> so that's a this is a, this is like an epic example of an epic. This is an epic question now that need to be broken down into agile project management, Scrum, Scrum environment, who fits Scrum. So so I can actually perform. Um, uh, I can groom this uh, this question and. Uh, and prioritize it in a scrum way. So, is um, I think if you go through the video, you would know. But in a nutshell, 
Hijack project management is a is a um, is a, a project management delivery a, a, a deliverable a, a delivering approach that follow agile principles and values and scrum is one of the practices of agile if you can you can say agile is some name why the scrum is a, is a, is a, is a, last name so you can withdraw scrum from agile so scrum is one of the four is a form of agile so it's as simple as if that has um, answered the question so and uh, we have about two minutes let's uh, do a bit of um let's test our why you can if you have other question please you can be typing it i have some other questions i want us to go through just to to jog our memory for the two lakhs um the two lessons we've done so Question one, what kind of software development project can be executed by Scrum project management? What kind? Choice one is complete uh, software package, customer project, sub project, all kind of software project. That is number four. I, um, Scrum can be used for all kind of software project. So that is the answer to that question. Question number two, what does not belong to Cornerstone of Agile Manifesto? Individual and interaction over process and tool, working software over comprehensive documentation, process over people, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following plan. Process over people, no, it's people over process, face to face uh, communication. So, number three is um, it's actually the obvious um, odd one out here. So question three, where are the customer requirements stored? Aha. One product backlog, spring backlog, database, Chrome requirement is called in the product backlog. Spring backlog is like, it's like a breast CD that body doesn't hurt, open ready, already been discussed and, and groomed by Theresa May. <laughs> then, Give it to Boris Johnson to go for election to deliver. So spring backlog is like it's already that work is already done just for you to 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 fry it like like a, uh, yeah it's like you're going to Tesco to go and buy chips and just you're frying it and eating it. Why backlog is when you go to farm for the farm to go and get the potato, wash it and slice it. So that that kind of uh, mindset. So slice to so maybe oven one, fried one, a fresh fry. All those kind of methods, yeah. So, answer is one. Number two is um, number four. Which one of the following main role are defined by Scrum framework? Which one? Scrum team, Scrum manager, Scrum master. Um, Scrum product owner. I know the other one out. There's no. There's not called Scrum manager. So any option, anyone that has C. Should not be should be out of it. So that's not good. That's not because from tester. Though there may be a, some uh, title they will say agile tester. They're just looking for a tester that can work in agile environment. Look me, a tester that can do a bit a bit of testing within the within the sprints instead of uh, uh, what uh, waterfall high level uh, volume testing. So. I've seen a lot of new agile testing, so it's not called agile, it's not called it's not Scrum uh, Tester or Scrum Manager. It's a Scrum Master, Product Owner, and Scrum Team. Those are the three. Okay. Next question What is defined by the Scrum Framework? Rule and roles, document that lie, artifacts and event. No, I think we. Answer well, rules and roles is a an artifacts which are upset at the output and the input that we produce from our event. The event can be called ceremony, we call um, agile meetings, agile ceremonies, and all those things. Question six Which one of the following main events are defined by Scrum framework? Okay, I think all of them and the spring planning meeting. Yes, that is the first one. The first spring, spring retro, that is after spring review, that is after, which is yes. Mid spring status review, that is not correct. 
daily score meeting that is yes so any answer that has d will not be correct so a choice uh, one triangle will be correct choice two will be correct three will not be correct four a square meeting is going to be four was asked or daily scrum during review yes yeah that's it please if you have question type it so after this question i can address it before we go yeah because time is um we've um, reached our time i'm just using the question to to jog our memory of what we've been doing for the past two weeks in software engineering what are the disadvantages of classical waterfall model end product has to be fully anticipated beforehand. Some requirements are implemented as defined in the beginning of the project and yet they are not really needed by the customer. Yes, each phase is strictly separated. Yeah, that is ABC. Yeah, correct answer is a five. All those are characteristics of a, of a waterfall, which is one of the why it's, um, it's not very efficient, but it has been around for long time that deliver billions of products and deliver most of the aircraft we flew in so that doesn't mean it doesn't work it's just like there are always a better way of of doing things so question 10 what are the advantages of scrum framework assume answer is all of the above fine green requirements are only defined when they are needed at spring backlog as a, as a spring backlog all activity to design, build, and test a certain functionality are kept together in one phase. Yeah. Changes are expected and welcome all the time. All of the above. Yeah. Fantastic. So, number seven. Which context is not defined in the Scrum framework? Yeah. Puja manager. Puja manager is not defined there. Scrum product owner is there. Daily Scrum is there. Scrum product burned down. No. Number five. So, uh, number five. Number five. There's a bond down shirt. There's a product owner that's not because scrum bond down. Uh, scrum product bond down. No, that's not appropriate. It's a bond down shirt. It's a bond down shirt. It's scrum bond down shirt. Anyway, we don't, let me look like that is called that is same correct. But it's a it's bond down shirt because we call it product bond down shirt. Okay. Number eight. What is the important? What is important in all Scrum projects? Self-organization, clear hierarchy in the company, communication, continuous. As I said, there's no hierarchy stuff there. So number two, A, C, and D will be the answer here. Okay, the Scrum approach originated with agile software development. As practitioners look for ways to improve communication, increase throughput, increase risk, all of the above. Increase throughput, increase communication, all of the above. It's still about decreasing the risk here. So, A or B will be, based on what you've done, will be more appropriate here. Although Scrum was intended for project management of software, it can be used or run you can use to run soft maintenance team or as a general project program as well as the approach yeah a lot is moving to a lot of areas now where is uh is becoming very popular the main role in the scrum are scrum master product owner scrum team person there's no person there it's going to be abcd scrum scrum eliminate many of the tasks required of a of a lead because team becomes self-organizing no, that's there's still some of um leadership role required in uh in scrum it's not eliminating the, the lead so that's not correct in scrum the team actively Activity is monitored and coordinated on a while it is daily basis, weekly basis. Yeah, it's daily basis, it's daily scrum. Scrum is attractive. The attraction is called sprints. That's a bit of error in this question. Yeah. 
da the dash is direction for maximum return on the investment is the product owner here because it's the eye of the customer is the person meeting the business all the time so it's person telling us what to do is somebody that can stop what we are doing and give us another work to do so it's responsible it's person that can reject or accept the work so it's the responsible guy for the money there the team is come is seven plus or minus two yeah, 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 that is uh, seven, it's between seven to nine. Yeah, that is correct. The last one, Scrum Master and Product Owner, can be same individual. That is not, it's, it's, they are two different roles entirely. So, the first step in Scrum is for Product Owner to articulate the product feature. Officially, this involves into a revised and prioritized list of features called Product Backlog. Yeah, so. There's no spring backlog is when you're not breaking down into backlog into the the team meets daily for 15 minutes where each member of the team discuss the work that needs to be done completed or any issue dash at this company simple time was professional team open communication with the team all of the above both a and b Unfortunately, it's going to be time box, cross functional team, open communication within the team. That is the openness, it's part of it. So, that's going to be C. Is the openness, respect, committed, focus, and um, fit on. User and stakeholder and Scrum are interested in the result, but not responsible for deliverables. You are right. They are. They are not going to be responsible for delivering it. Is the product owner that are responsible? They are interested. So, Scrum was formalized over a decade ago by by Dash, and it is now being used by company large and small. I think it's done by these two guys, A and B. Okay, so Ken and Jeff. Sorry, myself. I is I know one one guy is Ken, one guy is Jeff. I, I mean, sorry, myself. I don't even know the last name. <laughs> but anyway, is um is um that is, I think that is the end of the introductory um lesson so far. Let me see if we have uh, action here. Yeah, I think we are ten minutes above our time. So, um, if you have questions. As you can ask, let's discuss. It might be on career, it might be on um, on things that we've done. Let's interact. And, um, I think so far is um, I've, I've loved the class. It's very attentive. I like the way you ask questions. It's fantastic. So and I hope to you have, have added value so far. So if you don't mind, if you want to rate today's lecture between one to five. Five be very satisfactory, one be not satisfactory, so that I can I can reflect on my own delivery too, in line with agile principle. <laughs> so can you please let me can you please mark me please so that I can I can I can adapt and um, and adjust where appropriate. Between one to one to five, can you read it this delivery and the last delivery if you attend? So I think that is um got to the end of the introductory class. So if you have questions, free to ask. I'm still here. It might be on career or maybe any role you want to go into. I know most people have there'll be a lot of people that don't know whether should I go as a scrum master or a PO or a BA or a tester. You just have to know your area of strength. The as a scrum master, you might not need to be very technical, but if you are technical, that would be an advantage, really. So as a BA, the BA the kind of person that can ask questions, good with analysis, a BA to you as a part of the scrum team. So um, if you are a tester, you are still part of the scrum team. So a developer, you are still part of the scrum team. So is um is um 
is a there's a lot of open roads there so I recommend them reading there are a lot of books on them I, I, I will I think I'll get back on that really even myself I've never read any book on Ajay <laughs> so I won't, I won't say this book I've read myself so maybe I can find that and send to the admin okay so that is um thank you for people that have uh, submitted your 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 feedback that is good so we always improve on it trying to get five five next time so thank you all and um, maybe see you on the other side later when you are in the uh in the practical session okay thank you very much good night <laughs>